Hello everyone and welcome to Cooking with Miss Rice. In case you haven't guessed by these lovely ingredients we have here today, you're going to learn how to make some really nice guacamole. Now guacamole is not really all that hard. You just want to make sure you get the right ingredients and some good ripe avocados. I like the one, the Haas variety from Mexico. They always come out really nice in my opinion. So first thing we're going to do is I have a yellow bowl back here we'll be dumping everything into. And I'm going to first put this salt in. And then these are small limes. If you get a normal sized one, um, you really just need about one. But basically you want a couple tablespoons of uh, lime juice. Or you can even do lemon or any other citrus you like. But I think lime it comes out the nicest. That's one whole lime. There's one and a half. And two. Now, if you don't have a nice juicer like this at home, I believe I mentioned this in another video, but another thing you can do is you can always roll this between your hands like so to loosen up the juice, and then just use your fingers to force the juice out. So there we go. Okay, I'm going to put these in my little trash pile off screen, and I'll go ahead pour the juice into the bowl. Next, I like to have a little cilantro. If you're one of those people whose cilantro tastes like soap to you, by all means, leave it out. But you just want to chop up a small handful of it. It should come out to about a couple tablespoons. Please note, I am bending my fingers, so if I do go like this, the knife was more likely to slide off, and I'm less likely to cut the tips of my fingers. And I do want to remind you, always, always, always use a sharp knife. A sharp knife is much safer than a dull one. In fact, most knives, knife accidents in the kitchen, do not come from sharp knives, but from dull ones. Next. We're going to take one quarter of a large purple onion, and we're going to dice it. So first I'm doing nice little slices. I'm holding it together, making sure where the knife is going to come down. And then I'm just going to do very fine chops. And by going straight down, I prevent the onion from sliding much. Again, you can do it with a good, sharp knife. I already have some nice bits of onion there. Lovely. See, I'm a thumb nearly got. was gotten. Okay. Now these long bits here, you can just very carefully Keep your fingers back, of course. Now I'm just going to take this, put it in a bowl in the back. And then, now I do it this way because I kind of am going from what I feel is least messy to most messy ingredients. And we have good right avocados. They're going to be a little messy when you mess with them. So, very carefully, and feel free to do this on the cutting board. You're going to very carefully cut it from top to bottom. And you're going to need to go all the way around the pit. And then you just twist it apart. Poof. And we're just going to set these aside while we do the other ones. Because I prefer not to have my fingers a giant mess while I'm trying to cut the next avocado. And now I'm using three small avocados. This isn't the best season for them right now. It is winter time. So you can still get good avocados. They're just going to be smaller. If you choose to do this at home during a better avocado season, I'd recommend more the large two of the large ones. Or you can just adjust it as you need to. Now, next thing I'm going to do is, in this case, I'm going to take a wooden spoon. Let's get the bowl here. See all that loveliness? 
And I'm just going to use this. When you have a ripe avocado, you really don't need a sharp spoon. Just a wooden spoon will do. You can use a plastic spoon, whatever. Okay, so there's one. Make sure to get that off. Anything that you think might fall in that's gross that's on the avocado, just pick off. I like the little stem spoon, too. There we go. Got to be a little careful. These things can be slippery. I usually notice after I've done my second half of an avocado, all of a sudden everything starts falling out. Now, you're going to have to use your fingers a little bit to get the pits out. Some people, by the way, like to save the pits to try and go into a tree, and that is perfectly fine. You will get an avocado tree, but be warned, not every avocado tree will produce avocados. Some, as soon as they reach maturity as a tree, will produce avocados that first year. Some, it'll take five or ten. Some may never produce. And this is even if it comes from a very well-producing tree. It's just the way nature is sometimes. There we go. So as we can see, super, super easy. Now, the fun part. Now, you can use a fork or a masher. I like to use a potato masher because, hey, potato mashers are handy to have around. And this is where y'all get to have some fun watching me struggle because my hands are all slick now. I promised myself I wasn't going to do TV magic on this one. There we go. Y'all are just going to see me use my hands a little bit there. I'm wearing gloves, so I'm not too worried. Now, some people like to add a little bit of jalapeno to their guac and you know what if you really truly love jalapeno that much go for it but I feel guacamole since it's usually served with salsa it's part of the cooling agent you get a little bit of zip and zing from the raw purple onion which is a little sweet but it's still got that zing and I just feel like it defeats the purpose of the guacamole. Guacamole, the whole point of it is it's supposed to help cool your mouth after you've had some nice, hot, delicious salsa. There we go. Looks like one of them could have been a little ripe over that. Okay. And bam, that's it. It will take you more time to go to a store to buy this stuff than it will to actually make it. And then you have... Nice little serving of guacamole for a family. Not too much, not too little. Well, unless you're going to a party, in which case I would double or triple the recipe. Now, seasonings are, of course, always a personal issue. If you are not certain it's quite salty enough or you think it needs a little more citrus or a little less, adjust the recipe as you see fit. Remember, fresh vegetables and ingredients, especially if you go organic, they're going to vary from flavor to flavor, from season to season, depending on the weather patterns. So keep that in mind. You may need to adjust even year to year. All right, everybody. Until next time, happy cooking.